In this video, I wanna walk you through with Paul the range of baskets that we have. Roughly, I would group them into the 15, 18, and maybe even 20 gram baskets being the most current used in the new thinking on espresso, uh, with the 15 gram basket being more for medium to dark roast and the 18 and 20 more for light. This is a porta filter basket and you can take it out just like that. There's a spring that holds it in and put it in. And then there's another way to take it out and that's if you have another basket, you just wedge it in like this and take it out. And the reason I mention that is a lot of people don't realize they can actually change their basket. The Decent ships with a 18 gram basket and the other most common basket that we sell is the 15 gram. The 15 gram basket is the basket I use most often because I tend to drink coffees that are medium light roast to medium dark roast. I'm a little bit more on the lighter roast guy, so I kind of prefer and lean more towards the 18 gram. I just find the puck depth a little bit more forgiving. Yeah, and the other thing is, is that the hole size on a 15 gram basket is slightly smaller than on the 18 gram basket, and that goes in both directions. The bigger the basket, the hole size is calibrated for it. And the reason for that is that generally when you get a smaller basket, you want actually a slower flowing espresso. So smaller baskets, dark, darker roasts, larger baskets, lighter rows, and faster flow. So the whole size goes along with that dose. Obviously, it's also part of the fact that the bigger the basket, the thicker the puck, yes. and making the hole a little bit bigger compensates for the uh, increased resistance to that puck. This one is the ridgeless, okay. and this one is the ridged. So I have to explain just briefly what that is. This little ridge that's here, and as I'm moving my hand over it, you can hear it snapping. That is meant to catch on this spring that's right here, so that when I slide this in, it stops, and I have to push in, and you hear it snap. And then when I take it out, I have to overcome the resistance of the spring. So it's a little bit of work to get in there, and the reason that that's like that is so that when you bang in a knock box, the basket stays locked in. A lot of home baristas like to change their baskets for different coffees, and so the idea of a ridgeless basket has come out, and that's easier to slide in. It just slides in like that. When you bang on a knockbox, they don't tend to come out. The spring is using friction to hold it, but it's super easy because you can just slide it out. A lot of people like to hold this right under their grinder spout and just grind directly into the basket do the various things, tamp, and then put it in. That is something I think is a bit fussy, but it is something that a lot of people do. I would say that the expert coffee world is moving toward ridgeless baskets, and so are we. So at the moment, all our baskets are available in a ridged format, and as we reorder each basket, we're offering it in ridged and ridgeless, and probably eventually just ridgeless. The ridge on the outside translates to a slight divot on the inside and very often a little bit of coffee gets stuck in there so that when you tamp there's a little bit of coffee there. That upsets some people. Yes. And, and they're, they're sure that they get a better extraction without the ridge. Now that may or may not be the case, I don't know. Certainly I would say it can't hurt the extraction to get rid of the ridge. Now, next in our arsenal are the whole group of baskets that are 20, 22, and 24 grams. Now, those are for larger doses and generally for lighter rows. A lot of the trends that we've seen in, in the cafe world, we see a lot of, uh, let's say, the single origins mm -hmm. that have come out. We see a, a general trend that they generally overdose those baskets, filling them to almost to the brim mm -hmm. uh, and extracting that way. There are a couple of reasons for that. Working with the limitation of the machine, for one, in that they cannot control flow rate, so they use a basket to help with that. It just creates that extra volume and puck depth to help you with your extractions. If you have a nine bar machine, the speed of espresso extraction is gonna speed up over the course of that 10, 20, 30 seconds. Now, the reason that's important is if you have a light roast that is gonna turn acidic or has odd grassy notes or other flavors you don't like, the way to get rid of those nasty flavors is to make a shorter shot. 
But if you make a shorter shot with a 15 gram basket, well, you have barely anything to drink. The most common technique, especially in the previous decade, for making light roast taste good was to put 20, even 24 grams in and then extract even 0.8, like 24 in and like 20 out. That would be extreme, but I have seen all the time 24 in and like 24, 26 out, and it makes a delicious espresso. I'll also say that these 20 gram baskets are extremely common in cafes. And the reason is that the baristas are working so quickly, their tamping is inconsistent, and that thicker puck makes the coffees more consistent. In other words, they're less likely to channel when there's more stuff there. So faster workflow, but also if you're seeing inconsistency with your nine bar machine, larger dose is definitely gonna help. If you have a pressure profiling machine, the larger doses aren't so much needed because you're going to calibrate your machine to have a descending pressure profile as the shot continues. And so that sourness and that channeling that would happen is not really an issue. And that's why with the decent and other pressure profiling machines, you tend to see people go for 15, 18, sometimes 20 gram baskets. At Decent, our focus has really been on clarity of flavor, and we've really been on the light to medium light roast world. That's where we focus for the last seven years. But now we've been spending the last year or so really focusing on body, like what makes for a shot that's really easy to drink, um, thick and easy to pull, just something you might actually drink three, four, five times a day like the Italians do. We have a slightly wasted, a very wasted, and an extremely wasted basket. And these come in 14 gram dose and a 12 gram dose. Now the reason we have a 14 and a 14 is the slightly wasted and very wasted baskets both taste great with 14 gram doses, but going to very wasted, I believe, gives you something that's a bit simpler in the mouth, yes, but yes. more consistent, more chocolatey and thicker. It's kind of more what you would be used to in a, in a more Italian uh, traditional cafe. Mm -hmm. It won't be the best espresso in the world, but it's very, very easily attainable. Very satisfying, And too. very satisfying, yeah. yes, I was getting to that. Yeah, it's not so much brain, it's just, I like it. The 12 gram basket is uh, something that's new here at Decent. It's uh, something Paul's worked on quite a lot. What we really wanted to see was what was the smallest dose that we could put into a coffee basket and actually consistently make really good espresso. So the seven gram basket looks like no other basket we make. You can see it's extremely wasted. This basket starts at 58 millimeters and I believe it goes down to 41 millimeters down there. And seven grams is tiny. I mean, it's half a 14 gram dose, which is already quite small. The standard Italian way of doing this is you fill it and you tamp and it channels like mad. It, it's, it's not a delicious coffee. Uh, they often pull it ristretto. And what we did is develop a tamper that worked around the problems with this basket. And namely what you've got is a 41 millimeter tamper inside a 58 millimeter tamper. And what that lets you do is put a tiny dose inside here and keep it in there. So you can think of the seven gram basket as essentially a tiny basket inside a larger basket, just as this is a tiny tamper inside a larger tamper. This is for people who really wanna make coffee in the old Italian tradition. They wanna make a single espresso with a seven gram dose. And we think we can pull it off, but I wouldn't recommend this for anything except a dark roast. Unless you really wanted a challenge, and <laughs> I, would, I would stick to the dark for that basket. Oh, this is a 10 gram basket, and it's similar to our 15 gram basket, only a little bit shorter. Um, I would say this is for someone who really, really wants to go into the 10 gram basket world. It's like, that's you figured something out and it's working for you. I would say here, we haven't figured it out. Um, this is a basket that we don't use as often. We manufacture it so that we have the whole historical lineage of baskets. The 10 gram basket is definitely an important part of history but I wouldn't say it's an important part of today's new thinking about espresso. So those are our espresso baskets, and now I'm gonna talk about a few different kinds of baskets that we make as well. So here we have the pour over basket. Now this is a basket with very few holes. There's three holes in the center 
and six holes on the outside. And this is for putting a V60 pullover vessel underneath it and it squirts out like a shower at home would on this. So I'm talking about it in this video since it is a basket, but it is not an espresso basket. Continuing on the weird and unusual baskets, these are two puck simulator baskets. So again, these are not ready for making espressos. What these do is simulate as if you were making an espresso. And these holes, there's a 0.2 and a 0.3, uh, they will give you what is more or less a medium to dark roast um, emulation. That's the 0.2 hole. And a lighter roast would be around the 0.3 hole. That corresponds to about a 1.2 milliliter flow rate for the dark and a 2.0 milliliter flow rate for the lighter roast. And if you're more focused on light roasts, I would say the 18 to 24 gram baskets would be the ones that would be most interesting to you. Now, Paul, we also had discussion as to if you don't own decent, if you own indecent baskets, yeah. what would you be looking for to think that maybe these would improve your coffee? For sure, I would be actually doing a, a slightly strange thing and, and looking at the holes mm -hmm. in, in front of a light. This is a really good check, especially when you're, you know, doing group head uh, cleaning while it's back flushing. You know, you just hold up the holes and see if you can see anything that it may be ununiform, or perhaps you can even look at the base and see how flat your actual base of your uh, basket is. Over time, because of the pressures that the baskets do receive, they will start to sort of bow out a little bit. That can affect your extractions in the form of side extractions, which is what we just touched upon. You can test this out. If you normally tap one way and you see it coming out at one side, just turn it over around and put it in and see if the lower end of the basket where it's sort of concaved a bit, uh, is, is that the area where the coffee is coming out first? And if you can confirm that, that's a good sign to sort of say, mm, maybe I should consider trying a different basket to see if it's affecting my extractions, or I just need to change my basket completely. One of the signs of a poorly made basket is it's quite light, and you'll just physically weigh maybe a decent basket next to another one, you'll see, oh my God, it's quite light. Now, why does that matter? It matters because if you actually push on the bottom here, you'll actually find that cheap baskets will bend. Now, if they bend into your hand, you can bet that they will bend under 140 pounds per square inch of pressure, which is what an espresso is being made at. Another thing about our baskets is that the inside diameter is punched out to a very specific tolerance and we recommend that you get a temper that is 58.4 millimeters in diameter. You can go all the way to 58.55 and we have made tempers like that but if you do that you risk that you might suck out the puck. So our baskets and our tempers are all optimized for a 58.40 temper. Uh, which are widely available from us and other sources. Thanks for listening to us talk about our baskets.